top flank. Presented by Ram continues on ABC Action News Now. Well, welcome back to the plank. Uh, Tom Corn, along with John Sable. And you know, each week we like to uh, get into fantasy football, don't we? I won this week. I'm happy. And you did. mainly the reason why was because our fantasy guru, Matt McGuire, gave me some good tips on who to sit and who to maybe pick up on the waiver wire after week one. Matt, thanks. Hey, guys. Thanks a lot. <laughs> it's the time of the show where we get to talk a little bit of fantasy football. It was a wild week in the NFL, and fantasy football is no exception. You look at a guy like Allen Robinson, week one, he only had one catch for 27 yards. He comes out yesterday, two uh, week two, six catches, 155 yards, and two touchdowns. You know, fantasy football is so hard to predict, but that's why it's so great. You've got to manage injuries, and speaking of those injuries, none bigger than Tony Romo. So if Romo was your fantasy quarterback, I hope you drafted a good backup. If you didn't, you can look at a guy like Derek Carr as a replacement for Romo. Now, Carr was hurt in week one, but if you look at the production in week two, 351 yards and three touchdowns, including a key game-winning touchdown drive to seal that victory for Oakland. Now, a couple other players you might want to add. We're going to stay right there in Oakland, and we're going to talk about a guy, Michael Crabtree. Now, Crabtree is one of Carr's favorite targets out there. He's a proven NFL wide receiver, and this year he's in a more pass-focused offense in Oakland than what he's been in years past with the 49ers. If you look at his production from week two, nine catches, 111 yards, and one touchdown. But what really stands out to me are the 16 targets he got. You know, any NFL wide receiver that's getting the ball thrown his way 16 times is going to put up some good production. Now, the next guy we're going to talk about is Matt Jones. Now, he's a running back for the Washington Redskins, and he's from right here in the Tampa Bay area. He went to Armwood High School. He had a strong week in his NFL debut in week one, but really came out huge in week two. He had 123 yards and two touchdowns. Now, he added an additional 23 yards receiving. The only thing I'd like to point out about Matt Jones, he fumbled the ball twice. And in the NFL, it's hard to stay on the field if you're going to put the ball on the ground. So keep an eye on those turnovers. If he can get that under control, he'll be a solid contributor going forward. The last guy that I want to talk about that you might want to add is Deion Lewis. Now, he's a running back for the New England Patriots, and I'm usually pretty skeptical about talking about running backs in New England. They like to shuffle guys in and out of that position, but two weeks in a row now, Lewis has had some solid production. He had 40 yards rushing and one touchdown this week, but where I really like him is in point per reception leagues. He had six catches for 98 yards this week, so that's a great weapon for Tom Brady coming out of the backfield. But he's another guy who had two fumbles, and Belichick hates running backs who put the ball on the ground, so keep an eye on him as well. Now, there's one guy out there that's getting a lot of attention, but I think we should maybe stay away from him for right now, and that's Travis Benjamin. Now, he's had four touchdowns in two weeks, so that's going to get everyone's attention. He had a huge game last week with three touchdowns, and uh, of those three touchdowns, two of them were receiving. He had 115 yards receiving, so he's a great playmaker. Nobody denies that. But I want to stay away from him for two reasons. The first being the Browns' offense. Now, they're not exactly a consistent offense, so you never know what you're going to get week in and week out from the Browns. But the more important reason why I want to stay away from Benjamin is he's more of an all-or-nothing type of player. If you look at the 115 yards and, and two touchdowns, they came on just three catches. So I need to see more consistency out of Benjamin before I'm confident putting him in my lineup. So that's all we've got. Tom and John, back to you guys on the plank. Hey, appreciate it. Thanks, Matt. Uh, speaking of uh, Matt Jones, nice to have a kid, local kid from Armwood High School. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, you know, the first time I think we've, uh, we've had the opportunity to mention uh, a young man who uh, made uh, his, uh, his name known here in the Tampa Bay area starting out before, I think, uh, where did Matt go to Ohio State, if I'm not mistaken? Is that true? Uh, I don't remember where Matt I forget went. where he went, but no, that's great because you, you look at a local guy and it just shows all the other high school guys out there, too, mm -hmm. to keep uh, striving for whatever they're trying to get to in the next level, too. So I think it's that time of the show here. We're, uh, we're going to see who's walking the plank, TK. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, th this young man, uh, is a, a rookie uh, in the National Football League. He's in his first season. Uh, he does not play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, so we're going to, you know what, we're, let's, we're, let's tease this because we're, we're not going to unveil it right now. Apparently. Oh, that's what I was doing. Oh, you were? Okay. Well, maybe. Maybe? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. But I can tell you that, uh, that I'll bet you that none of you know who it is. <laughs> and you might even know how to pronounce his name. Maybe, yeah. Okay. We're going we're to unveil who that's going to be coming up when we come back right here on The Plank. 